Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am diving into this drawer where I have all my high-end powder foundations. I'll give you my speed reviews on all these 10 high-end powder foundations that I currently have in my collection, and also will share all the essential details about their performance, coverage, and lasting power. This video is a part two to the video that came out several months ago where I talked about affordable powder foundations. I love complexion products very much, and here on my channel, I do a reviews and wear tests on a lot of different complexion products. I do have all those videos nicely organized and a complexion chronicles playlist that I will also have that playlist link for you in the description box and one of those where task first impression videos I did share my tips how I applied powder foundations which tools I also like to use and techniques so I'll also have that video linked for you in the description box for your reference but before we get started I would love to welcome new visitors and viewers to my channel hi my name is Eve and I love all things beauty here on my channel I talk about makeup skincare hair care and at times lifestyle things like travel fashion lifestyle vlogs I upload new videos every Every week. And if that sounds interesting to you, I hope you stick around, subscribe to my channel, and now without further ado, let's dive in. Before I begin with the speed reviews, let me introduce my skin type to you. I am 38 and I'm a combination oily skin. I also live in hot and humid Florida. My skin definitely fluctuates from less oily to more oily between summer and winter. I enjoy powder foundations. That's why I have so many in my collection. The first powder foundation that I wanted to share with you today is this one from One Size Beauty. It's called Turn Up The Base. First of all, I absolutely adore this packaging. It feels really luxe. It's very different. To my opinion, this is a powder foundation that checks every single box on the list. List. This gives you a beautiful high coverage. I personally prefer to apply it with a denser brush and then if I need a little bit more concentrated higher coverage in certain areas I would pack my sponge and just press into certain areas. Um, I do have a generally redness here on my cheek so I'll take my sponge and just press it directly on that area and it gives me a beautiful extra coverage. This is a very long wearing formula and this shade is my spot on beautiful match. This foundation looks very beautiful on my skin. It is very long wearing. It is also providing very nice smooth coverage and it doesn't settle into lines. I find it not only long wearing but also humidity and sweat resistant. Okay, the second powder foundation that I have here to talk about is this HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder Foundation from Makeup Forever. This came with a little sponge that had a dual side. The sponge was supposed to help you with different types of application and I think that the sponge definitely worked. However, for my personal preference, I do prefer the sponge for retouching purposes. I have this powder in the shade 1 and 10 and this is a really good natural match for me when I'm at my pale list. All the claims on this powder foundation I find to be true. I do have a wear test and full review on this product. Also in this first impressions wear test video, I did share my extra tips of powder foundation applications and then the tools that I use, etc. This is a powder that gives you a really nice high coverage. I wouldn't call it necessarily a full coverage, the ones that you absolutely cannot see through, but it definitely gives you a really nice high coverage. I find that it does um, camouflage my redness here on the cheeks pretty well. I find it pretty long wearing and this powder also doesn't settle into my lines. As a combination oily skin person, I usually need to retouch my complexion products anywhere from three, four, five hours. And this powder, I have to say, retouches beautifully. Not only once, but second and third time if you have to. It does look really nice after retouching. It looks very natural. Nothing gets disrupted. It doesn't break down as my oils come through. So generally, I think the quality is very high on this product and it is long wearing. It wears beautifully. I also think that this powder can be a nice retouching powder, not because it does come with its own sponge and it has a beautiful mirror, but also it has a very nice firmly pressed consistency. When you pick it up, it's a very, very thin powder. Quite few powder foundations on the market would have a little bit softer, a much softer consistency, and it would carry a lot of product right away. This powder foundation, because it is firmer pressed, it definitely gives you a thinner layer for retouching, and that works very well. This next powder foundation is from one of my favorite brands for complexion products. I do enjoy their liquid foundation formulas, and this product, this powder foundation, has been my favorite for many, many years. I first discovered this powder foundation a long time ago when I was in my early 20s and this has been repurchased many many times and this is just one of my favorite products that has been working for me back then when I was in my 20s and also now in my late 30s. This is almost powder makeup powder foundation with the SPF 18. This is a fragrance free formula also. All the products from Clinique are fragrance free which I very much appreciate and love. This powder foundation is in the shade 01 Fair. This compact also has a really nice mirror. It reminds me of the Makeup Forever a little bit. It's just 
just a touch bit softer than the Makeup Forever one. Everything else is very, very similar. It is long wearing and gives you beautiful coverage. It looks very natural on skin. It is a buildable coverage too. It doesn't give you too much right away. So you can control how much coverage you can get. You can also use this for retouching purposes because it is somewhat like a thinner consistency. And as you can see, I have hit the pan on this powder. It's how much it's loved. So whenever I want a higher coverage, I want to say that this powder foundation gives me the highest or almost one of the highest coverages out of all the powder foundations that I'm talking about right now. To achieve that almost full coverage, I would use a powder puff, pick up the product and press it into my skin. You can even do a swiping motion. It blends very nicely and smoothly on your skin, it gives you a soft matte finish. If you, like me, if you have more visible pores and a little bit of texture on your complexion, that it definitely helps you to smooth everything out. And if you apply it with a brush, it definitely gives you a nice medium coverage, just a little bit lighter than with a puff. The next one up is the Soft Matte Powder Foundation from Fenty Beauty. I have mine in the shade 170. This is the shade that works better for me when I'm at my playlist. This powder foundation, I prefer applying with the sponge with a pressing motion. That way of application will give me a true medium coverage. If you apply it with a brush, I find this powder be more of like a finishing retouching powder rather than actually giving you a powder foundation coverage effect. This is a medium coverage powder foundation on my skin. Like I mentioned earlier, I do have some redness um, here on my cheeks and sometimes around my eyebrows and I noticed that my redness still comes through in those areas. A few times when I used this powder, I had a few breakouts on my skin. They were a little bit more pink and those breakouts would still be see-through. So definitely I would recommend color correcting or concealing certain areas before using this. When it comes to powder foundations, I definitely like a little bit higher coverage, like high medium coverage to almost full coverage. This is a type of powder that I personally, due to my personal liking, I like to use it as a setting powder or finishing powder to my medium or lighter coverage liquid complexion products. But overall, this is a very high quality powder that it is quite long wearing and it also can be multifunctional. You can use it for coverage reasons or you can also use it as a nice retouching finishing powder. powder. The next powder that I want to talk about is the It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation. This is anti-aging and hydrating formula. This shade is better for me at my summer complexion when I'm a little bit more tanned and it also looks a little bit lighter in the pan that it actually goes on skin. This powder foundation is a little bit softer press and you do get a little bit of a kickback when you pick it up with a brush. I prefer applying it with either a sponge or a brush. However, with a brush application, however, you initially generally get a little bit lighter coverage. However, it does build up in several layers. With a sponge application, you still get a really nice coverage just the same way you would with a brush application, but it takes you shorter time to get there. This is a very good looking powder foundation product on my skin. It gives me a really nice coverage. It looks very natural on skin. I would say do not over apply it too much because it is a softer product. You can definitely over apply it a little bit and it may look a little bit more powdery. The coverage builds up pretty fast with this one. Generally, it does wear really nicely on my skin. However, because it is an anti-aging formula and does have some hydrating ingredients in it, I do need to retouch my T-zone in about two hours when I wear this. But regardless of that, this is one of my favorite powder foundation formulas in my. The next powder foundation that I have in my collection is the Shape Tape from Tarte. The shade that I have is 22 and Light Neutral. This shade for me is a really good match when I'm self-tanned. This powder foundation looks exactly the same on my skin the way it looks here in the pan. This powder foundation is quite similar to the It Cosmetic Celebration foundation that I just spoke about. There are just very few minor differences. This covers redness very, very well. This gives you a really nice high coverage to the point that it is almost like a good full coverage. And it also is very smoothing on complexion. I wore this powder foundation when I had some bumps on my chin and I actually found it being smoothing on breakouts and it definitely covers the redness. I prefer applying it with a sponge with a pressing motion and it would give you really nice high coverage right away. You can definitely build it up a little bit and go with a little bit less pressure, pick it up on the sponge, just less product, and then just go ahead and press it into your skin. And uh, you can also go pack your sponge a little bit better or you'll puff a little bit better and just press and you will get higher coverage that way. But with a brush, again, it would give you a little bit lighter coverage if you wanted to. And then you can also layer it very nicely to a higher, medium and full coverage. This looks beautiful on skin. It almost looks like a no makeup makeup because it is so smoothing and it really looks like 
your skin bed better. This powder foundation wears really well on my skin. It is very long wearing. However, I also need to retouch it in about two hours and then maybe in the next two, three hours again because my oils would start coming through on the center of my face. However, it does retouch beautifully. Because of its soft texture, it almost melts into your skin and after a few hours, it doesn't even look like you applied a powder product. It looks like you applied a liquid foundation on your face. Um, it's pretty great for me. The next powder foundation that's up is from MAC. This is Studio Fix Powder Plus Powder Foundation. I have my in the shade NC15. This is definitely a very bright shade for me. Unfortunately, generally would not work for my overall face. However, I did test this powder foundation as my overall complexion. This is the powder that is giving you a pretty high coverage, like high medium to almost full. However, whenever you try to build it up to almost full coverage, it does look a little bit powdery. So I do prefer to stop at the medium. This powder wears pretty okay on my skin. However, it didn't smooth my complexion here on my T-zone. This powder also, unfortunately, does not retouch very well. Uh, when my oils came through and I tried to retouch it and use the oil absorbent sheets they actually lifted the entire complexion so and I had pieces of complexion missing especially like around my nose area and where the areas were very oily to my opinion I don't think this is the best working powder for my summer complexion when I get oily very fast and quite often I have to retouch my complexion the next powder up that I have here is from the brand pure it's four in one pressed mineral makeup SPF 15 I have mine in the shade light porcelain this is a shade that definitely fits into my non self tan complexion. This powder has a slight luminosity to it. However, it doesn't make you too shiny. It just makes your skin look alive. Like with the previous powder, I would say that applying it with a powder puff with the pressing motions would actually give you more coverage. With this powder, I find the case being completely the opposite. It applies better with the smaller powder brush with a circular motion and it does build up in a very smooth consistency. It gives you beautiful lighter to a nice medium coverage, but it looks very, very natural on skin with the light luminosity. It looks very, very beautiful. Even on my combination oily skin, I did not have issues with that. It did not accentuate any of my pores or even um, smaller breakouts sometimes when I have them here on my chin from time to time. This wears beautifully throughout the day. This is also a beautiful finishing and retouching powder. and. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention is that whenever I tried to apply it with a sponge, however, it would not look good at all. It would actually be a little bit more clumpy. It just wouldn't do it any justice. Overall, it wears really beautifully uh, on my skin. It is quite long wearing. I really like this powder foundation. I do have a backup of this. The next powder up is also by It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation Illumination. This is anti-aging and hydrating powder foundation formula. I have mine in the shade Fair, and just like its name says, it is an illuminating formula. This powder foundation compact is really nice. It has a mirror, and there is a small brush included. There is no sponge. And I do have some thoughts to share with you on that particular matter. I do prefer applying this powder foundation with a smaller, very soft powder brush in layers. I think that way the powder product applies a little bit better. I also prefer to reach that high medium coverage. I notice whenever you try to reach that higher coverage and apply more layers, it starts looking cakey. This powder foundation is pretty softly pressed whenever you pick it up with a brush. I suggest to be pretty gentle with your brush when tapping onto the product. This foundation makes your skin, your skin, but better. Like you woke up super fresh, like you slept all the needed hours. It just looks flawless on your skin. If you are the person who doesn't like wearing makeup, like blushes, highlighters, this is a type of formula that looks just so flawless that you do not even need to apply anything else. So whenever I apply it, I just feel beautiful without anything else on my face. There's not one single product that I can say this in my entire collection of liquid products, of powder products that give me that effect. It does give you the beautiful coverage but also luminosity that just naturally highlights higher points of your face and just makes you feel beautiful and like naturally flawless and it's quite interesting the effect that this powder foundation gives your skin however i am a combination oily skin and this product does not unfortunately last too long on me. My oils come through very fast, maybe in about two hours, sometimes even sooner. I generally think that this powder product is high quality and is gorgeous. I just think that I'm not a skin type for that. The last powder foundation that I wanted to talk about today is this one from It Cosmetics. Again, you guys can see how many It Cosmetics powder foundation that I have in my stash. This is a Bye Bye powder foundation. I have my in the shade light. This is unfortunately the product that has been discontinued. This is a shade that matches me best when I'm a little bit tanned. This formula is pretty straightforward. Forward. If you like to apply it with a brush in layers, you can control the coverage a little bit. You can definitely build it up to high coverage, but brush generally gives you a little bit 
lighter coverage and then if I want a little bit higher coverage I just pack my puff and just press it into the areas that I want more coverage at and then it wears really well it doesn't settle into my lines it looks natural on skin it is quite smoothing so it just kind of hits all those boxes on my checklist when it comes to powder foundation product generally the product has been discontinued but if you ever see it somewhere you will know my thoughts on it so these were all the high-end powder foundations that I wanted to share with you today that are currently in my makeup collection. I hope this video was helpful for you and if you would like to hear my thoughts on the more affordable powder foundations that are currently in my collection, where I will have that part one video link for you here at the cards at the end of this video and also in the description box for your reference. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I give this a big thumb up. It does help my channel out and if you're not yet a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe to my channel before you leave today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next videos. Bye!